Peace be with you. My name is Alan Kiesler, although I'm in the United States of America. I'm always thinking about Pakistan, because Pakistan is not an ordinary place, but is that very, very special place where, God willing, pure Islam will be reestablished. Pure Islam means love, truth, justice, and morality. And, of course, always remembering God, always calling on the names of God, and always serving uh, God, and serving each other, serving humanity, serving all living beings. That is real Islam, and that is what must be reestablished and will be reestablished in Pakistan in the near future, inshallah. It depends on us. So I have just given a very short chat talking about uh, that we must establish self-sufficient villages. As I've said earlier, I was told in every zilla, in every district in Pakistan, uh, we should establish a village where food can be grown, all necessities of life can be supplied within the community itself, with nothing at all coming in from outside. So this is a very, very wonderful uh, opportunity to engage in this priceless what, is, what can we call it? It's a service. It's a spiritual service. Uh, it's material or physical, but it's also a great spiritual opportunity, responsibility. So let's see if we have any questions or comments about this or some other relevant topics. Okay, Saliha Khanum says, Saliha Khanum says, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam, Saliha Khanum ji. Faraz Ahmed says, Sir, some words on Giza pyramids. Uh, well, they're really not that important, but if you want to know, I have been informed it's available. Uh, extraterrestrials who built those pyramids have, have talked about why they built them and how they built them. And you can uh, find that information in the Law of One. Uh, there is a book or a series of books called the Law of One books. And in there, in those books, it tells about the extraterrestrials, orig originally from the planet Venus, don't believe the so-called scientists who tell us <laughs> it's, uh, Venus is uninhabitable. There have been people living on Venus for a long, long, long time. And uh, after many years of development, much more than we have developed yet, technologically at least, certainly, and spiritually too, uh, they uh, came to the Earth planet to help us in our development. And part of their program was building those pyramids, which are really uh, meant for a spiritual purpose. Okay, Mustafa Farhan Hussein says, What will be role Odd Gaia in end times? Have you met her or having any idea about her these days? Uh, role of Gaia. Gaia, the earth, uh, in the end times. I uh, have not met her, um, and I don't know what her role is, but obviously she's very important she, because it is the earth uh, which is coming to a higher level of consciousness in these end times. The day of resurrection is the opportunity to come to a higher level of spiritual awareness. Um, but I'm sorry, I don't know what her role will be. Imtiaz Shada Kodwala says, Hello, brother. Oh, automatically translated. Hello to you too, Shadad Kod Saheb. I've been to Shadad Kod. Asim Kazi says, Salam, sir. Salam ji, how are you? I am fine. Thank you. Faraz Ahmed says, You said that the aliens' face are like a dog or cat in ancient Egyptian sculptures. Show us some dog face aliens. Uh, Yes, there are many different species. I don't like to call them aliens, but our brothers and sisters from other planets. So extraterrestrials is a neutral word. Aliens is kind of a negative word. I mean, they're foreign from us. They're different. They're not different from us. They are our brothers and sisters. They're just like us, a little different. And some of them have faces uh, like dogs' faces or cats' faces or mm, birds' faces. There are many different types of extraterrestrials. Uh, interestingly, they almost all have two arms, two legs, <laughs> like we do, and a head. And, but uh, 
their faces are different. Yes, I think you're right that the ancient Egyptians uh, were in contact with extraterrestrials who had some different facial features. Okay, Annie Annie says, we cannot live in our own home. I have a large garden. Um, I'm not quite sure what that means, we cannot live in our own home. Um, but wherever you live, in a city or wherever, uh, it's important to have a village community where we can grow our own food nearby, not too far away. Because it's possible that the electric and gas, you know, the grid will shut down. We should be prepared for that in case that happens. And I've been given some hint, never any details or uh, explanation, but that we should be prepared for that by 2023 or during 2023, we must have completed developing village communities where we can grow our own food. Um, I don't know where your home is, why you say you cannot live in it, Annie Annie, but in any case, uh, if you have a large garden, uh, you can start, you can begin there, learning how to grow your own food. Uh, but also, I've been told very clearly, there must be rural village communities, because who knows uh, what would happen in a city if there's a shutdown of the grid, you can imagine. So we should be prepared for that. And in addition to that, living as I live in the country here, uh, it's so much more peaceful and better for spiritual life. Easier, I should say. Maybe not better, because spiritual life can be practiced anywhere, and sometimes when it's more difficult, it's better in some ways. But it's much easier to have peace of mind and a relaxed life uh, when living out in the country or in a village. So I suggest if you have a large garden in the city, that's good. You can start growing your own, some, some of your own food there. But also, we must develop village self-sufficient communities. Asim Qazi says, I'm from Pakistan. Love you from Pakistan. Thank you very much. I love you too. I love all Pakistanis especially because I know you have a very, very special responsibility and duty and opportunity to redevelop pure Islam and make your entire country a true Muslim country based on love <laughs> and loving each other, taking care of each other, serving each other. Uh, that is real Islam. Okay, Javed Akbal says, I'm thinking about it for the last few years. Why? I don't know. Well, you have some good intuition. God is telling everyone this, I think. Anyone who can listen, anyone who can hear the voice of God, you may have been hearing this. I've been, many days I've been hearing this and talking about it. Hey, Javed Iqbal, it looks destructive years ahead. Um, I don't know if destructive is the right, right word, but uh, changes. There will be big changes and... Uh, Yes. Of course, destruction means opportunity for rebuilding. When you are building a new building, you have to destroy the buildings that are there, tear them down, and then build a new building. So uh, there may be some destruction, but it really is only an opportunity to rebuild a healthy spiritual life, communities where people love each other and take care of each other as family members. Salia Khanum says, Sir, where do you, where, how do you know all this? I mean, what is your source of your knowledge? Um, I explained on in some earlier chats in the last uh, couple of weeks that uh, I was in the dentist's chair. I was <laughs> sitting at the dentist and he had given me an anti, uh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> he had given me the injection of some shot some uh, so that I wouldn't feel the pain of the uh, work he was doing on my tooth and uh, then he said it will take a few minutes for this to become effective so he went away and during those few minutes I went into a trance state and I saw a ruler a straight edge with focused on two and three so I was trying to understand what is this two and three uh, but I saw it. I just literally saw it in my vision, you can say. And um, so that's the way I get a lot of my knowledge, is just by visions. Or more often than visions, I have uh, audiences. That is, I can hear 
somebody saying something or I can hear a voice very literally. And so by seeing and by hearing, I, by the mercy of God and the mercy of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the great saints and teachers and prophets and leaders of humanity, spiritual leaders, by their mercy I have this ability. Uh, I don't know how I got it, but it was by mercy. So that's, I think, what you mean. Of course, the real source of knowledge is Holy Scriptures. Holy Quran, Holy Bible, so many scriptures are there. And everything that we hear and see that must be in correspondence with Scripture. Um, but there's much more specific individual, you can say, even information that we can benefit from. So sometimes we are given that. You also can get knowledge this way because God is in your heart also. God can speak to you and in your heart. You may already hear the voice of God in your heart, everyone. God is speaking to us in our hearts, so if we pray and meditate, then we can hear God's direction in our hearts. Mustafa Farhan Hussein says, Do you like to meet people who have similar divine contact as yours? That is, if someone is in contact with Gabriel. Um, of course, I like to meet all sorts of people, but especially people who have some sort of divine contact. Asim Ghazi says, You go back USA, sir. Um, okay, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Uh, I'm in USA now. <laughs> Sadhanum says, please pardon my question if not relevant. It's fine, it's relevant. I don't care if it's relevant or not. Ask any question that you want to. If the Khan Ahmed says, how to establish self-sufficient villages in Pakistan by 2023? How can you guess? Um, have you any good news about this? Uh, I have lots of very good news that this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to create a new civilization pure Islam. I believe that in these villages is where the pure Islam will really be established and practiced and set an example. So um, that's very good news, uh, that if we want pure Islam to be reestablished in Pakistan, we should develop these self-sufficient villages. And uh, there it will be easier to practice pure Islam, just being loving and kind to each other, taking care of each other, having a village life, which Usually, that's automatically what happens in villages. Become like a family, an extended family in a village. So, um, how to do it? Just begin by going out in the countryside. Actually, Pakistan is very fortunate. In America, I don't think there are anything like self-sufficient villages. Um, but in Pakistan, there are many villages that are practically self-sufficient already. So, one thing you can do is find a village not far from where you live, and begin going there and talking with the people there, how you would like to work together with them to develop a full self-sufficient community there and see how they respond. Or you can go and find some, that would be the easiest way. But if you can't uh, find that sort of place, then you have to establish your own uh, community. You, can, you have to find friends who are also agreeable and interested and uh, go and find some land in the countryside. I was doing this, how long ago was it? It was at least uh, in the 1990s or maybe even 1980s I started, but in the 1990s I had several friends and we decided to do this, to go to the country and find some village where we could all live together and grow our own food. And uh, what ended up happening is that I was out here in the country looking for land and uh, I found one of my father's cousins, <laughs> and he had this house where I'm living now, and he sold it to me for a very good, very good price. And we have a nice piece of land, half an acre of land, where we grow, have grown many vegetables and uh, fruit trees we've planted. And, so, and I've talked with the other neighbors now. I've become friends with other people here in Esparto, and we have been discussing uh, how to become completely self-sufficient. Uh, there's plenty of land and water around here, so we're very lucky for that. So that's how we can do it. Find a community where it was already uh, agricultural and you can easily develop it as a self-sufficient community. Otherwise, you have to develop it with some friends on your own. Very good news. <laughs> Ani Ani says, my father was in army. I live in Kant. Uh, okay, that's good. 
<laughs> just find some place nearby, some village nearby where you, you can meet the people and talk to them and find people who are eager to understand this point, how important it is to have self-sufficiency, to have a community where one can live self-sufficiently. I don't know if you can do it in the cant, in the cantonment, in the city. Maybe, but probably difficult. But try to find a nearby rural community, a village, where you can work on this very, very important project. Okay, Hamza Qamarbat says, Assalamu alaikum. Sir, how are you? When will you come back to Pakistan? Well, I am fine, by the mercy of Allah. And uh, I don't know when I'll come back to Pakistan. I was on my way last year, practically. I had my visa and ticket, but then I got stopped at the last minute. So I really don't know when I will come. But I've pledged, when I come to Pakistan, anyone who has established a self-sufficient village community, I will come there and spend some time there with you. So please do it. <laughs> Encourage me like that. Okay. Asim Qazi, aapko urdu bhi aati hai, na sir? Haan, mujhe urdu bhi aati hai. Lekin aaj mein angrezi mein baat kar raha. Muhammad Hamza, humans are a reflection of Allah, but no man can be his reflection alone, nor woman. They are born, make complete reflection of Allah. That's why Prophet has said to marry, and Allah has produced some needs that can be completed with the man and woman met, meets so that they can create love and become completed reflection of him. This is my thoughts on gender. Uh, af Allah, am I right or not? Uh, very good. I like your uh, thoughts very much. I think you're very close to the truth here, yes. Definitely uh, we see male and female in this world and where do male and female come from? And why are they so important? Why is human society based on family, a man and woman and children? Um, my understanding is there must be this within Allah also. Not that Allah is a man or a woman, but Allah is both male and female, both masculine and feminine. And that nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reflected in human society where men and women need each other. And it's an opportunity for men and women to love each other and work together to serve uh, their children and their family and their community and, of course, ultimately uh, to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I like your thoughts. Thank you very much. Good thinking. Farid says, if God, is it God who insults sinful person or is it another person's fault who insults sinful person? Uh, don't blame God for <laughs> anything. <laughs> Insulting people, no. Uh, Mustafa Farhan Hussein, you said yes to my question about Gabriel. I want to introduce you with a friend of mine with similar contact. Reply me in Messenger. I will send her link. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Hamza Qamarbat, what are your thoughts about COVID, about Corona, COVID-19? I have said many, many things about yours, and I have been banned or warned on both Facebook and YouTube. You can't talk the truth about this thing because some people don't want the truth known, so I can't really talk too much about it. Uh, otherwise, I might be, again, I was cut off, not allowed for one week to do the, my live chats. So uh, there are two topics you can't talk about. One is COVID and the other is politics in, in America right now, especially. Ambreen um, Farooq says, sir, hi, sir. How do to meditation tell me the easiest way? The easiest way is zikr. That's the way I always meditate. There's other very good ways to meditate also, but that is what I do. Muhammad Hamza, Thar and Cholistan villages are self-sufficient where they drink rain and has no electricity. Very good. So we already have villages in Thar and in Cholistan, so encourage them. Maybe you can go there and help live there too, learn to live in that side of the situation also. Or have a community of friends who can move there and become friendly with those villagers. Pakistan is very fortunate. There already are such communities, so they can be an example to others. So uh, I do have to say that a friend of mine is going to come to pick me up, to take me somewhere this morning for some important work. So I'm going to have to end this chat soon. Uh, he was going to call me first. I thought he would have called by now. But uh, I will... I expect to get a phone call very soon, so I will have to answer the chat suddenly when that 
calls, phone call comes because he's going to come and pick me up soon. Let me just make sure the... I'm just checking here to make sure my... Yes, okay. All right, so Sali Hachanum says, Do you think use of psilocybin MDM in another way is useful to increase knowledge of spiritual experience of someone? Um, maybe, sometimes it could, but I don't use these things, artificial drugs. They may help some people, I don't know. I never used psilocybin or MDM, um, but some people say that they have gotten some spiritual knowledge from it, I don't know. But uh, I don't recommend it. Better to do zikr. That is the best <laughs> best way to increase knowledge or spiritual experience. Salih Hachanum, or can it be an upcoming natural medical solution? I don't think so. No, I don't think it will be some medic natural medical solution. Uh, maybe, but I don't know. I don't think so. And I, certainly I'm not going to wait for it or depend on it. Let us, let us find our uh, spiritual knowledge and spiritual experience by meditation and by prayer, especially by zikr. Hussein Ali, sir, alien exist on earth? Yes, I have met them. <laughs> they do exist. Don't believe the mass media. Don't believe the so-called educational systems, which conceal the truth more than reveal it. Uh, so people are preventing the knowledge from being spread. Uh, but uh, yes, extraterrestrials, people from other planets, uh, do exist on earth and have for thousands and probably millions of years. Rabul Muhammad says, Hi, dear sir, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. By the mercy of Allah, Muhammad Hamza says, Jinns are aliens on earth. Uh, maybe jinns are aliens, maybe they're earth creatures, I don't know. Uh, some aliens, um, no doubt, are jinns, and some jinns are aliens, but or extraterrestrials, I should say. Um, but there may be some jinns that are from the earth too, I don't know. Um, but I know that there are extraterrestrials who are not jinns also. Not all extraterrestrials are jinns, some are, um, but many are, even angels are extraterrestrials. They're not, they're not residents of earth, but they come to earth sometimes, so similarly, uh, other extraterrestrials also come to earth sometimes, and some are living here for a long time. Minal Isra says, what do you think about one world religion? Well, you asked this question day before yesterday and I answered it. Uh, there I gave the answer that uh, as there are beautiful flowers in a garden, uh, when the flowers are of many different kinds and colors, the garden is more beautiful. So similarly, when there are many different religions, then uh, the earth is more beautiful. When people of different religions come together and glorify God together, uh, and serve and worship together, it's even more wonderful. So that's my opinion. I'm not in favor of one world religion in that sense. But uh, in another sense, there is only one world religion, there's only one universal religion, and that is a service of God and of God's creation. Love. Love is the universal religion. But within that one universal religion, which you may call Dini Islam, it has many different names, but it is the one universal religion eternal, only religion, which is love and service. Love of God, service of God, love of humanity, service of humanity, love of all of God's creation, including our extraterrestrial brothers and sisters, and service to everyone, and including animals and plants. Service is the essence. Love, loving service, is the essence of the one world religion, the only real religion. Whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. Salih Sali Hakanu says, Jazakallah for answering Sir Kushre. Okay, uh, it is time now for me to go. So thank you very, very much. And uh, look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, inshallah. Allah Hafiz. May God protect us all.